Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John Cole and I have the pleasure of speaking with one of our wonderful regular contributors, Dr. Liz Lister, MD. Dr. Liz, how are you? Doing well, thank you. How are you? We're doing great, and we've been looking forward to talking with you again. Um, I have a topic for us, and that is uh, a little bit different. We've talked about everything under the sun, it seems like to me, uh, relating health in our bodies, but we haven't really talked about brain science. What can you tell us about brain, our brains? Yeah, the brain, it's such an incredible, fabulous, wonderful organ. I am recently back from the annual conference of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. It was very, very interesting. And I listened to a particular talk and it gave me a whole new perspective on the brain. Don't you think that we always think of the brain as a computer? You always hear sure. the brain getting compared oh, to yes. a computer. Synapses right? and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You've got the neurons and and then you've got the computer versus the human chess player and who can yeah. <laughs> figure out the moves more quickly. And so we think of it as this, this computer where these processes are running all the time. Well, the new perspective that I really like, and when I tell it to you, it'll shed light on why some of the current treatments that are emerging are actually effective for people. And that is that the brain, rather than being a computer, it's really more an electrochemical organ. Electrochemical, it's bathed in fluid, right? The brain is bathed in fluid at all times, which is part of how it functions. Ah. Okay. So in addition to everything that we already know with the neurons and the synapses and the dendrites and the axons and all those, all that interesting anatomy of the brain, there's also the electrochemistry, the hormonal part of the brain. We all know about all the dopamine and the oxytocin and serotonin and all these, these hormones that are influencing the brain function. And, and that, again, is part of that, that chemical of the electrochemical. Hmm. Really, really That's, fascinating. That is, a, that is an interesting perspective. Has it led to new drugs and new procedures? Yes, exactly. It sure has. One that's not a new procedure at all, but now we're starting to understand more of why it helps. And that is something that people have probably seen on a TV show or a movie is electro shock therapy. Why does that help? There are people who have certain mental illnesses, including treatment resistant depression, uh, other types of mental illnesses that elect chemical, actually they call it ECT now, uh, but basically it's what's commonly referred to as electric shock therapy. Why does that help? How could that be? And now we're starting to move forward and integrate other types of information to really understand why it is that that actually does help some people, it helps them feel better and function better. So that's one example. I think that's it's kind of interesting that, that um, uh, I was uh, fortunate enough, uh, uh, probably within the last year, uh, I forget which term it was, I took a, an online course with uh, uh, an instructor who was talking about the brain and its functions and so on and so forth. And um, one of the really interesting things that, uh, which seems to be an area that you're going into, is that the brain really is sort of like a, a, a control of, it, it gets sensors from every place and it sends information down. Uh, back to it. But what was really interesting is that they found, uh, they continue to find areas that are affected in the brain where they never thought one thing had to do with another. So for instance, uh, a, a, a certain section of the brain that uh, maybe uh, uh, people who have, are addicted to drugs or to alcohol or something are affected, but they found out that in certain uh, areas of uh, other things that you're dealing with, let's say somebody lost a limb, the same effect happens in the same area. And then by treating it the same way or with the same kind of drugs, they get positive results for something that seemed totally unrelated, but it's because of what section of the brain tends to take over 
or to supplement another section when a limb is missing or, or something like that. And also, yeah. where, uh, uh, when we all think about the electroshock therapy of, uh, what was it, uh, with the Jack Nicholson film, One Fool of the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, is that rather than just, you know, uh, putting uh, two leads of, a, of an AC wire on either side of the brain, sort of, is that they, they can now better concentrate on certain areas so that it's all kind right. of fascinating. Um, so right. what's, your, what's your big takeaway about this uh, new uh, uh, thinking uh, that you have about uh, this, uh, this thing that's immersed in liquid and sloshes around and does stuff? Uh, what's your big takeaway well, on the brain? I'm hoping that what it really does is usher in a whole new era of thinking about brain science and mental health and mm. how we can all improve our mental health. Uh, you reminded me of a couple other examples. I just wanted to say quickly, if I may, another one that's a, a technique that's relatively new that is taking hold in a lot of psychiatrist offices that I know is TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. So using magnets to influence. Of course, we also know that magnetic pull influences fluid flow. All right, so that's influencing it. Another is ketamine. Have either of you heard of ketamine before? Yeah, yeah. It's used, yeah. when I was in my residency training 30 plus years ago, <laughs> which is shocking to me to say that, uh, is was used only for anesthetic. It was used as a short acting anesthetic and we also were instructed not to use it very often because it gave really crazy, vivid, uh, alarming dreams to people sometimes when they were using it. However, now it's being introduced. This is also some, a technique that's being used more often in different psychiatrist offices, also for treatment-resistant depression. Ketamine, it's being given in the office. The patient gets observed in the office. So my, I would say my takeaway for us is that this whole new way of thinking about the brain hopefully will help us all expand our minds and get more familiar with other types of treatments and techniques that are going to really help people feel better. It's so important to our overall health to have good brain health, good mental health. Mm. Wow, great information. Uh, nice update and important, important stuff. Thank you. I, I, I actually, I want to push it a little bit further. Uh, the Other than going to Dr. Sanjay Gupta, uh, how does a normal person, uh, uh, the normal patient, uh, find out whether or not uh, they're, should they be going to other doctors besides their own GP who may know more about this? Because it seems like it's something that you, who we know, studies up on lots of different things, not necessarily related to your field of study, because you're, you're interested in this stuff, uh, in medicine in general. How do we make sure that um, we're going to get the benefit of that as, a, as an ordinary consumer of medical uh, uh, practice? Art, you keep asking this million dollar question. This is, this is the challenge that we all have. It's a challenge to doctors. It's a challenge to patients. We have Google now. And I always say to, when I do presentations, I have a slide that shows a funny uh, coffee mug that says, don't confuse your Google search with my medical degree. However, nowadays doctors need to be open to the information that patients bring in and patients need to ask the questions so they can find out if their doctors are availing themselves of latest information. It's all about communication. That's, that's what I would say for right now. Okay, well, thank you. And that, John, you always say you've got to be your own best advocate. So there yep. you go. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Liz. My pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.